Hey, good morning everybody. JB the Ranch Mechanic here and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be trying to fix this Milwaukee grease gun. This is a M18 fuel 18 volt uh, grease gun. It's a fantastic tool. It makes taking care of our equipment out here a heck of a lot faster than using a manual gun. The problem that we have is that this thing is about three years old now and it's just had the absolute crap beaten out of it and we don't have any high speed gear anymore. It only works on low range which is fine for most things. And you're not gonna be able to really hear the difference because I don't have the, I've taken the grease tube off and the, uh, and the hose and everything. But when you flip it into high range, you might be able to hear some grinding. Yeah, it's definitely not healthy. So we're gonna be replacing the whole gear train in here. This is a part number 2646-20. That's the grease gun that I have here. And we have a new, drive mechanism which will replace this part down here as you can see that's the uh, actual gear drive for the for the pump which latches on to the motor back here so we have to split the case on this thing and replace that i also have just for good measure since we're going to be in there anyway i went ahead and bought a new grease piston for it just because i don't have any idea how worn out this piston is but it has a lot of hours on it so this is an eight dollar part this is a hundred and ten dollar part a new one of these things is about 300 bucks. So still with a new piston and a new uh, drive assembly, um, we're still way ahead money-wise, less than half the cost of just replacing this thing. This is nice because this will crank out about 10,000 PSI worth of grease. And we have a bunch of uh, large uh, cylinders, like track cylinders for uh, our excavators and bulldozers and whatnot that we need to expand to tighten up the, tighten up the tracks. This thing is really good for that. It saves a lot of uh, hassle trying to pan pump grease into those things. So those grease cylinders are huge. So this is kind of a crucial piece of equipment. So anyway, we're going to take the battery off, render this thing safe, so we're not going to break ourselves or anything else, and I'm just going to get into it. Never taken one of these things apart before. I have taken apart a few different Milwaukee M18 tools. I was, I'm assuming that this is going to come apart in a very similar fashion. There's just a bunch of uh, a bunch of screws that we'll need to pull out. These are most of the time Torx bits. It uh, looks like most of them are Torx bits. There's probably down in the recesses here, there's probably a few Torx safety bits that we will need to uh, remove. I'll have to just see what we're up against here. Before I even do any of that, though, this thing is filthy and I can't even see what I'm doing. So off camera real quick, I'm just going to hose this thing down with some brake parts cleaner and uh, get a lot of the scuzz off here, at least around the screw holes, so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll be right back and we'll tear into it. All right, guys, got you zoomed in a little bit here. Got all the screws loosened up on this thing. You are going to need a T20 security bit. And I have this little, like, computer repair toolkit thing here. I got this on Amazon. It was only, like, maybe 15 bucks, probably less. I've had it for a bunch of years in the back of my toolbox, and I only ever really use it on stuff like this just because you need to have these little thin tool bits to get down inside these recesses to get to all the little screws. So there's a whole handful of screws here, probably like 10 of them, and they're all T20. Some of them are security bits, some of them aren't, but I have them all loosened up now. So at this point, I think we're safe to just try to uh, start loosening the clamshell on this thing. Actually, no, I lied. If you look at the front here, I'm just now noticing this. There's these two screws on the front. So you guys can see that or not. There's two screws on the front of the gearbox housing. It looks like those go into the plastic. So I'm going to remove these as well. Do that real quick on camera since I clearly missed it to begin with. But those are really in there. Sometimes most of these screws I had to break loose with uh, my wrench here because they're in there really tight. And the problem with these little thin handled tool bit things is that they're great for getting into deep well recesses like this, but you can't get any torque on the handle because the handles are so thin. Luckily for this, this little extension piece has a hex on it, so I can just put an adjustable wrench on it and use that to break everything loose, like so. so. These two are for the front of the gearbox. Now we should be good to split this. Should be. Again, I've never worked on one of these particular tools before, but most of these Milwaukee's kind of come apart the same way. So there we go. Just separate it. What I'm trying to do is avoid any little springs or clips or anything falling out. So I just got to be real careful. Just work this apart. The biggest areas you want to pay attention to are up here by the battery where the battery clips on and your trigger. I don't know what kind of uh, mechanism we have in there. So you just want to be careful with it. But if you just work slowly, this should come right apart. Should, should come right apart. Oop, okay, that went a little faster than I wanted it to. But there we go, that clamshell just lifts off. Perfect. So that is out of the way. 
and now we have the guts of the tool exposed here so we could see our trigger and this is the spring i was talking about for the trigger sometimes you don't want to launch that out of the out of the housing so be careful with that what we're going to be replacing is just the front of the gearbox here so we'll replace that and then the actual grease piston itself i think is up in here and i'm not sure yeah so let me turn this around and show you so right here is the front of the gearbox and then the actual grease piston the pump um, that's a separate piece that we'll have to take off of the old motor and put it on the new one we'll convert this over but since i have a new grease piston here we're going to replace that and the little seal in there as well just to make sure that there's no issues with that so now to get this guy out of here what do we need to do let's see is this held in by anything else no it's not it just floats so um i'm wearing nitrile gloves because grease is awful <laughs> It's just a mess. It gets all over everything. So yeah, we can just lift this whole gearbox out of the front here. And you have this little this little plastic slider right here. This little bar, let me take this out and show you. So here's the new one. This little bar right here, this slider on the top, that's your high range and low range, your speed one and speed two. So that's what hooks up to this little plastic selector switch here. So as you're pulling this out, I want to make sure you don't uh, damage the switch at all trying to pull this out. So now, as far as I can tell, this whole thing slides out. So I'm just going to lift and pull. And, ooh, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Another voiceover after the fact. That should not have separated that way. Basically what happened is you're supposed to be able to twist this uh, gearbox to disengage it from the motor. And the little tabs that hold it in place had broken probably as a result of whatever damage ended up killing our high range on this thing to begin with. But basically what happened there is it just slid apart when I lifted up the gearbox and the whole planetary assembly just dumped out right there in front of the motor. So that kind of took me by surprise. Not a huge deal. I mean, it comes out anyway, but it was a little bit scary. What do we got going on here? This is the whole planetary assembly just kind of came out here. And I'm not sure if that... Okay, so that should be contained. That just kind of came apart, but it looks like on the front of the motor, there's two Phillips head screws there. Can you see that? looks like there's two Phillips head screws there that kind of attach this rear cap onto the actual motor. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have to slide this other piece apart on this new gearbox here, slide this part out. That's where those two screws pass through right there. So we're going to have to split this open and transfer this onto the, onto the existing motor. So not a big deal. I'm just going to have to take it piece by piece here. So I'm going to probably put you guys in time-lapse mode here while I do this, and then I'll bring you back with any details as needed. All right, well, it became apparent to me pretty quickly that this is uh, designed to be unscrewed. So yeah, you just turn it to the left and the cap slides right off. So. Yeah, no need to pry it open, no need to find any release tabs or whatever, it's just a twist and slide deal. So that makes me feel better. We'll go ahead and attach this to the front, lock our motor in place, and then we'll be good to go. So we'll just re reuse these two existing screws with the lock nuts that they had. Get those started. And our new motor is all assembled and everything, so we just line that guy up until the gears slide in, and then we line up the tabs, twist it up to lock it, and then it's locked to the shaft, and then everything just drops right back in. All right guys, a little continuity flip here. I got this motor locked on to the new transmission, pumping assembly, whatever you want to call it, and I realized that I forgot to transfer over the actual uh, pump rod and the pump mechanism off of the old gearbox here. So this is a T25 bit you'll need. Just loosen up these two torque screws. This cap will slide off. You can pull the grease piston out and then slide this little driver off the front. So I'm going to do that real quick, transfer that over to the new unit, and then we'll be all set to go to test fire this thing. That's the nice thing about Milwaukee though. Usually you can find, for any tool made in the last 10 years or so, you can usually find plentiful replacement parts for them. So if stuff like this happens, you shouldn't have an issue getting it fixed. Now, they do have a pretty decent warranty, but 
I didn't realize that if you buy Milwaukee tools from places like Amazon, that warranty does not apply. You have to buy it from an authorized reseller in order for Milwaukee to honor their warranty, which I think kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Anyway, so this just slides off the front after you get those two torque screws out of there, and then this should just slide out the top. Yep, there we go. So here's our grease piston right here. I don't know what kind of wear is on this thing, but we're going to go ahead and just replace it. And that should be all we need off of the old assembly. So now we have our new piston right here. Another quick voiceover while I'm fumbling with the package here. I ordered all this stuff from ereplacementparts.com. This is all OEM Milwaukee stuff. Um, and I only order from them just because they're right over in Salt Lake so I can get parts really quickly. I'm not affiliated with them, but they're, uh, they're really good to work with. Really fast shipping. We'll slide this guy down into the pump assembly. That's a much tighter fit. It's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Push that all the way down, get it out of the way. And that will allow us to slide this cap on like so. You can see that this cap just slides on. Let me pull our grease piston back up because the flat part of the top of the piston is supposed to be almost lined up at the top of that. And we will take our cap here and bolt that guy on. Okay. So that's pretty much it here. New grease piston, new gearbox installed. We'll slide that down into place here. Like so. That kind of locks itself in. Line up with the holes. There we go. Of course, I got called away to deal with another piece of equipment real quick, but anyway, forget where we left off. But I think we were just testing the switch. The switch works, everything's good to go in there. So we got all the gears lined up properly. Um, so yeah, now all there is left to do is bolt this thing back together and then test it. Make sure that we're still in good shape here. So line up the other half of our clamshell and that will allow us to uh, throw a battery in this thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a battery in it and just test everything real quick. Just make sure everything spins freely and doesn't make any weird noises on us. Just to make sure we got it all done properly. I hate to screw this entire clamshell back together and then have to rip it apart again. So I'll put one or two in, kind of around the battery and the trigger and stuff to make sure that that's all squared away. There, yeah, it should just push back together exactly how it came apart, so fairly simple. So now I'll just tighten up just a couple of these screws. One back here by the battery. Of course, we'll take these two screws in the front. Put these in the front of the gearbox to hold the gearbox in. Okay, that should be good enough just for a quick test here. See what happens. Put it on range number one first. Okay, range number two. Sweet. Right, that sounds really good. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and button this entire thing up, tighten up all these screws, reattach the grease hose, and then we'll throw some grease back in a new canister and uh, make sure everything is good to go here. So I'll bring you back for that here shortly. Okay, got that in there. Pressure out of there. Throw a battery on this guy. Make sure we get grease coming out. Got a little bit of pressure there still. There we go. Starting to click, so I need to pumping. There we are. Got that grease. Now, high range. There we go. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 
successful repair of a Milwaukee M18 fuel grease gun. Now we have high range and low range working. And uh, I have not broken down the old gearbox to figure out where the failure was. But my presumption is that inside here, yeah, right here, this ring right here, that slides back and forth and that gives you your speed ranges. I'm guessing that those teeth may have sheared. It's just something within within that uh, plastic. I mean, most of the gears in here are are uh, MIM compressed in steel, but this one sliding gear that goes from high range to low range, that is plastic. And high range is where we were having the issue. It was just spinning and spinning without engaging on anything. So I'm wondering if maybe part of that uh, little plastic ring gear inside there had failed. So anyway, that's gonna be it guys. If you have any questions, please let me know, but uh, pretty simple repair as long as you can tolerate dealing with all these little dinky uh, torque screws that hold everything together. But clamshell comes right apart, new unit drops right in, and you're uh, up and running. So not terribly difficult to do. So again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Be safe, have fun, Catch you guys on the next one. See ya.